I have for you today what I assume will be a pretty short video because not a lot sold last week. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body cameras by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on reselling platforms such as Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Kitizen. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the very few things <laughs> that sold last week. Part of the reason why I think I had such few sales is because I was finishing up my vacation. If you watched my video last week of what sold for me, um, you'll know that I was actually on a family vacation at the Smoky Mountains and it was a wonderful time, but I obviously wasn't like listing or doing a whole lot while I was gone and so that resulted in fewer sales as to be expected. I do these what sold videos once every week as well as haul videos and tips and tricks videos so if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and if you want to make sure that you are alerted every time I put out new content which is usually at least twice a week then make sure you hit that notification bell as well so that you don't miss anything. But let's get right into what sold. I started off the week, which was August 3rd, Monday, with zero sales. And believe it or not, that was not my only day with zero sales. It was one of two. So if you know what it feels like to have a rough sales week, go ahead and hit that like button before we talk about probably my best day, which was Tuesday the 4th of August. So on the 4th, which is the day that we started driving back to our house from the Smoky Mountains, and when I started to get a little bit more aggressive about like sending out offers and stuff like that, um, you know, it did help a little bit. So the first thing that sold was a bundle over on Poshmark. It was two items, the first being this pair of New With Tags Secret Treasures Gray Soft Sleep Socks. Those were in my 4 for $25 sale because let's be honest, they are a pair of socks and I think that they're actually from Walmart. I think that that's the brand. Um, this was just something that I rescued from our garage sale thing that we were doing at school for our theater department and, you know, just wanted to try and sell um, online to see if it would make more money than, you know, what it would earn at a garage sale. I thought, well, I hoped, I hoped that Secret Treasures was a really great brand. <laughs> it ended up not being. But that's how you learn. You just, you know, take stuff home and look it up and see what happens. But regardless of the brand, I mean, they were super soft and they seemed really comfortable. I don't know about you, but I really like to sleep in socks, especially in the winter. In fact, I can't sleep without them. And my husband is the polar opposite. He thinks it's disgusting to have socks on when he sleeps. Let me know in the comments below. Are you a sock wearer or not when you sleep? I, I love it. I don't know what it is. So anyway, moving on to the second item in this bundle, it was this pair of Forever 21 high-waisted polka dot shorts in a size 26. They were in like this dark navy color with white polka dots. Super cute, very retro looking. These I have had for over two years and I finally got around to relisting them because I I am going through this process right now of relisting my entire Poshmark closet and it really has been helping to move out some of my oldest listings and I know a lot of people are like well why don't you just redonate you know or why don't you just send those items to thread up I know that I would probably make like 35 cents on these shorts um, on thread up and my you know thinking is I've already taken the time to take these pictures I've already taken the time to create the listings so I would rather just like see the sale through to the end if that makes sense and that's why like I said I've been you know on this quest of relisting everything and adjusting you know listing titles and adding more keywords in the descriptions and whatnot and I do feel like it's been helping so these sold after having been listed for two years and I think that it sold in this bundle to Nessa who is a viewer so Nessa thank you so much I think it sold to her probably within a week of me relisting these shorts so as much as I hate relisting, my God, it works. So I sent her a bundle on these two items that she liked for $18 with discounted shipping. I made $12.28. I'm happy to get them out of my house. And I'm happy that Nessa has some really cool things because I still really do like those shorts. I probably would pick them up today, even though they are Forever 21. And like I said, those socks were really soft and they seemed super comfortable. So I hope you love everything, Nessa. Thank you so much. The next thing to sell was a result of Offers to Likers and it was this Gap Kids gray waffle knit crew neck sweater in a size large. I sent out an offer of $15 with discounted shipping and I made $9.88. 
I paid less than 90 cents for that at the consignment store. So I'm definitely, you know, making a profit, not a huge one, but a profit nonetheless. And then the next thing to sell on Poshmark, I was really excited about because it was a full price sale. It was this pair of Levi's 501 button fly straight leg jeans in a size 34 by 34. I had them listed for $34. Someone bought them outright and I made $27 and 20 cents. I don't really remember where I got those, um, but they've been listed for a few months now and yeah, I made a good amount of money on those. The next thing sold on eBay, and it was this new with tags, Banana Republic black sequin tank top in a size small petite. This has been listed forever. I did get it for free from a friend probably a year and a half ago at this point. Someone liked the item. I sent out an offer to watchers for $19.90 and they accepted. That was with me doing free shipping. And so after shipping, which cost $3.31, I made a total of $14 on that. And then on Kittizen, I sold this pair of Umbro pink and black soccer cleats in a size toddler nine. Those sold for $13. She carded them and then I sent her an offer of $13. I did pay for shipping which was $4.75, so I made $6.76 on those. Not like the greatest profit because they probably have like, you know, under $2 into them, so probably not something worth picking up or definitely not something that I should be selling with free shipping, but good to know and I will not pick these kinds of things up in the future or only pick them up if I am, you know, making the person pay for shipping. And then last week in my What's Old video, I asked you guys if you would be interested in hearing about my thread up sales in my weekly What's Old videos. And you know, most of you said yes. So I do have a couple thread up sales. Thread up is interesting because if something sells, people have the opportunity to return it to ThreadUp. And if that's the case, you actually don't make money on that item, obviously, because you know ThreadUp didn't actually sell it for you, it came back to them. However, if it sells for a second time, then at that point, they immediately release your funds to you, even if it does get returned to them later on. And I think that's just kind of their way of being like, you know, enough is enough. <laughs> like if it sells, you know, that many times, like you should just be able to keep the money. So I do have more things than just these two that sold, but these are the two that I have gotten payouts for. They are nothing big, nothing super exciting, but as many of you know, I am experimenting with ThreadUp and I'm in this stage right now of just like sending them a ton of stuff, the majority of it from the consignment store because I have, especially for like clothing items, less than a dollar into each of those pieces. So it's a perfect way to just kind of experiment, try some different brands out at ThreadUp, see how they do. And because I was getting so much of this stuff for so cheap, at the end of the day, it's still pure profit and it's without me doing anything. I'm not, you know, photographing. I'm not really doing anything except for putting the information about that piece into my spreadsheet. So although these two sales were not super exciting, I was happy to have them nonetheless. So the first thing to sell this week on ThreadUp was this pair of Gloria Vanderbilt jeans in a straight leg fit, and they were in a size 16. They sold on ThreadUp for, I think it says $36.99. I can't read my own handwriting. Um, that was like the max amount that I could price it to. And so my payout on those was $8.70. I have never sold Gloria Vanderbilt. I've never picked it up on my own to sell on you know, Poshmark or anything like that. I probably could have made a little bit more for that brand if I were to sell it on Poshmark or eBay, but I don't really care for that brand. And so it's not something that I would have picked up to you know, resell myself, but because I didn't have to do any of the work, I was really happy with $8.70. And like I said, I probably have like 85 cents into those. I don't think that I will be picking up Gloria Vanderbilt anymore to send into ThreadUp just because it didn't seem like it was super worth it. And I do think the fact that it was a size 16 is one of the the reasons why it did sell on ThreadUp for that asking price of $36.99. So then on Wednesday, which was August 5th, that was my second $0 day. So that's good because that was the day that I, you know, shipped out everything from over the weekend. And if I had to add more sales to it, I think that would have been a little too much. So then moving on to August 6th, which was a Thursday, I only had one sale and it was over on Poshmark. It was this new with tags, ASOS long sleeve open back mini dress in like this rich kind of like burgundy color in a size 12. Someone sent me an offer on this for $15, which I accepted. So I made $12. This, I think I've 
Mm, I can't remember if this came from the consignment store or not, but I feel like I've had it for a decent amount of time. Yeah, I mean, at least like a couple months. So I was happy to see that go. ASOS just doesn't really sell for a whole lot. I remember when I first found the website, I was like, oh, this is so cute. And I felt like their stuff was really expensive, but the resale value is not high at all. And then on Friday, August 7th, I had a good number of sales and that's because it was closet clear out. So I did have three sales as a result of that. So the first thing to sell was this pair of Jambu, Jambu, I'm not sure how you say that. It was this pair of black sport wedge suede comfort shoes. They looked kind of like dance go, except they weren't as like solid. You know how dance goes? It's like, you feel like you could just throw it against the wall or something and like nothing bad would happen to them. These had more like bend and shape to them. Um, these sold for $28 using my closet clear out method. I think I had them priced at 34. So I made $22 and 40 cents on those. They are from the consignment store. And so I had less than $2 into them. The next thing to sell was also from the consignment store. And it was this loft printed V-neck long sleeve dress with pockets. I remember um, the buyer asked me a question about it. I answered the question. She didn't really like follow up with any sort of offer or anything, but then the next day was closet clear out. So I sent her my closet clear out message telling her I could drop the price from $25 to $20, which she was really excited about. So I made $16 off of that dress and I had about 85 cents into it. The next thing to sell was also from the consignment store, also sold as a result of closet clear out. It was this button up shirt by Billy Reed. I have never seen this brand before. It looked kind of nice. Comp were honestly kind of all over the place um but i just went ahead and priced it at 25 dollars. it was just like a striped button-up shirt in a size medium i don't know it yeah it, could i have gotten a ton more for it maybe i don't really know but i was happy with the 16 dollars that i made off of it because i didn't have it listed that long and i was able to move it pretty quickly the last thing to sell on Poshmark, I really like this piece. It was by Matilda Jane and it was Matilda Jane for women. Matilda Jane is a great line for kids, but their women's pieces are just as darling. This was called the New Leaf Flowy Layer Top in a size medium. And it was in this beautiful kind of like mauve color. It sold for $25. I think I had it listed for 30 or 35. I think I had a list for like $35, but someone sent me an offer for 25. So I just went ahead and accepted and I made $20 off of that. And that was only listed for maybe a month or two as well. And then on eBay, I sold this Banana Republic black non-iron slim fit button up dress shirt in a size 15 to 15 and a half neck. That sold for $12. They paid for shipping. I made $9.84 on that. It is this shirt's second time being sold. The first time it sold, the guy wanted to return it because he said that the cuffs were not the style that he liked and he just didn't really like how it fit so he returned it but after you know relisting it for free on ebay it probably sold again within a matter of one month so i'm just happy to see it gone i've had this for a really long time the cook of the restaurant that my brother worked at for a really long time gave it to him to give to me because they knew that i sold clothing and so that's where this came from. And again, I've had it for forever and it's not the most exciting piece. It's a black dress shirt. So I hope that this time it sticks, you know, oftentimes the second time something sells, that's the keeper. So I'm hoping that that's the case. And then the last thing to sell on eBay was this pair of Keen trail shoe sneakers in a size six. They did have like Keen spelled out on the side. They were so interesting. I've never seen anything like these before, especially from the brand Keen, which is a great outdoor like hiking brand in shoes. And so I got an offer for $30 on these. I happily accepted because I think at that point I had the price at like $34 or $35. And after they paid for shipping, although I did have to pay an additional like 75 cents to get these shipped out, I made $24.44. I believe I got those at a local consignment store for maybe like $6 or something like that not too long ago. So not horrible. You know, I think it's still a pretty good flip. And then on Saturday the 8th, I sold this Garnet Hill Knit Polka Dot Casual Lounge dress in a size extra small. I did have an Instagram post about this. And if you're not following me on Instagram, I will put my Instagram handle right here. But I was so excited about this because this is another dress that I've had now for 
at least a year. I actually got it at the consignment store that I've been, you know, buying stuff by the bag from, but I got it last year at their birthday tent sale. And I remember I probably had like a dollar and 25 cents into this, but again, I've had it for a really long time. And so what I did was in the process of relisting my entire closet, I relisted this and I priced it a little bit higher than I had it priced earlier. And I just changed a lot of like the keywords around, changed the description around. It sold within a matter of hours. So I was so excited about that. And it did sell for my full asking price of $25. So I ended up making $20 on that dress. Good riddance. It was really cute. It was 100% cotton and just a great loungewear dress or great like casual dress to wear around the house. But I was sick of looking at it. <laughs> the next item to sell was from the consignment store and it was this pair of Under Armour gray loose fit golf shorts in a size 42 for men. That is a little bit larger of a size. They did have some poles on it and stuff, which I showed in the pictures. I think I had them listed for 18. Someone sent me an offer for 10, which, you know, was not super exciting to me, but given the state that they were in, I just went ahead and accepted the offer. So I made $7.05 on that sale. And that takes us to our last day, which is Sunday the 9th. And I had just two Poshmark sales and one thread up sale. So the first thing to sell was this LL Bean floral deluxe book back backpack with pockets. I think that's what it's called, the book pack. I don't know. This one I had listed for like 25 or $28. Someone sent me an offer of 15. So I kind of combined two tricks that I've been using lately, which is my closet clear out method, as well as if people send me an offer that I'm like okay with, like I'll take that offer, but I'd like to see if I could get more, then what I'll do is I will create a bundle and I'll start a conversation with a potential buyer and ask them if they'd be willing to meet me at you know whatever price I'm a little bit more comfortable with. With this case, I was more comfortable with $20 than 15. So I said, you know, would you be able to meet me in the middle at $20? If so, I can ship this out tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. But also because it was closet clear out, I was like, can you meet me at $20? And if so, then I can drop the price and you'll also get discounted shipping. So this person was like, sure, I sold it for $20, I made $16. It was from the consignment store. I did have less than a dollar into it, but still I knew that there was some more value there than the $15 offer. Now the beauty of that tactic, if you will, is that if the person says no and they don't want to, you know, budge on their price, but you're still open to it, then the offer is still there. It still stands and you can just press accept. You have to swallow your pride a little bit, but you just press accept and you still made the sale. But that's what I do like about that method versus countering and potentially losing the sale or accepting and always feeling like you should have got a little bit more. This kind of, you know, is the best alternative, if you will. And it definitely has been helping me out in making a few more bucks on, you know, the different transactions that I just don't feel comfortable with the initial offer. And I have heard from a lot of you on Instagram that this has been working out for you splendidly as well. It's a trip that I learned on Instagram from another Instagrammer named Ween Lissa. That's her handle. And again, it's been very helpful for me in my reselling business. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried it and if you have found it helpful as well. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was by the brand Danify. I don't know what this brand is. I feel like maybe it's an Amazon brand. I don't know, but it was this blue nautical one piece striped swimsuit dress type thing in a size six. This was another thing that I relisted and it sold within you know a few days of me relisting it. Um, someone liked the item, so I sent them a closet clear out message and I dropped the price to $15. So I made $12 after they accepted that offer. So I was really happy to see that go after having it listed for over a year. And all it took was, you know, for me to relist it. So if you're in a rut or if you don't have a lot of inventory or you're not in a position to buy more inventory, I really highly suggest relisting the items that are in your closet starting with the oldest items and secondly if you are not cross-listing yet I highly recommend cross-listing to other platforms this might be your opportunity to try out some new platforms and the cross-listing tool that I use and really stand by is called list perfectly I do have an affiliate link for it and I will leave that down below but I'll tell you like you know so many people 
comment on my videos or on Instagram and they say, I can't believe you have time to list on so many different platforms. And really the only reason I have that kind of time is because I am using a tool like List Perfectly. So just throwing that out there, it has been so beneficial for my reselling business. And I do think that it pays for itself like that. So the very last thing to sell this week was over on ThreadUp. This was even less impressive than my other ThreadUp sale, but it was this Lane Bryant Outlet Salmon Color Blazer in a size 22, which is plus size. It sold for $28.99 on thread up, which was the maximum amount that I could price this at because this is Lane Bryant outlet. And for that reason, they don't really let you, you know, price it super high. So my payout was $5 and 66 cents. I do wish on that piece. I had just sold it myself because I do think I could have made more than $5 and 66 cents, but I'll be honest with you. I have a really hard time selling blazers. I don't like photographing that color. It's really hard to like get that color accurately. And so for those reasons, I was happy to make my $5 and 66 cents and not really do anything, but throw it in a box type it into a spreadsheet and I was done. So if you're interested in trying out ThreadUp, by the way, I will have an affiliate link down below for ThreadUp. You get like, I wanna say $10 of credit just for using my link to sign up for ThreadUp. And then also if you wanna learn more about ThreadUp and just have someone kind of hold your hand through the process of how to get started and how to find any sort of success on ThreadUp, there is a woman named Chriselle who created a wonderful course on it. So if you like taking courses or you know, you'd rather have a one-stop shop with all the information that you could possibly need about thread up i highly recommend this course you get 40 dollars off with my coupon code and i will have that information for you down below as well so for the week i sold let's see 12 women's pieces four men's pieces and three kids pieces on poshmark i sold a total of 13 pieces for 190 dollars and 81 cents in profit again that's what goes into my bank account and that's the amount after you know all of poshmark's fees all my shipping discounts all that kind of stuff on eBay, I sold only three things. I swear my eBay numbers like continue to plummet week after week after week. So I have to spend a little bit more time on eBay and see what's going on there. But I only made $48.28 on eBay from those three items. On Kittizen, I had the one sale for a total of $6.76. And then on ThreadUp, I sold two things earning $14.36. So that brought my total to 19 items sold for a net sales amount of $260.21. Sense. That is pretty stinking awful, especially considering the fact that probably for the last like at least couple months, I've been averaging around like $500 a week. But you know, that's kind of to be expected given the fact that for many of those days, I just didn't really do anything, you know? So that's what happens when you don't really do anything. And that's totally fine with me because the vacation was well worth it. And then from that consignment store, I like to always kind of update you guys on how many things I've sold from there and how much I've earned thus far. If you remember, I had purchased over 1200 items, you know, and a lot of those, items not a lot, but like a handful of those items were for me to keep, were for my kids, you know, stuff like that. I spent an initial investment of $1,400. So I have so far sold 157 items and earned $2,584.40. So I've already made more than $1,000 of profit from this one store. And I have probably like, I don't know, a couple hundred going into thread up and again, like over six, seven, 700 things to list. So a lot of money to be made from this investment and I'm really excited about it. So that is what sold for me this past week. This current week is also looking kind of bleak if I'm being honest with you. It has not been the most profitable, although today I'm filming on a Tuesday. They're doing closet clear out today, which is kind of interesting because they don't usually do it on a Tuesday, but I have already made like two or three sales because of my closet clear out method. And then hopefully the rest of the week picks up a little bit. So that's kind of what I've been up to and what sales have looked like for me let me know in the comments down below how sales have been for you has august been pretty rough for you as well i hope not i hope it's been better than my august but a lot of times i find that what i'm experiencing a lot of other people are experiencing as well so that's how things have been going for me i am starting school next week we're starting with some um remote like professional development so it'll be interesting to see how that goes and i think that's it thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one bye